Okay, now we've got everybody. Uh, Mr. Conklin, whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, I'm Leslie M. Conklin, and I represent the appellant, Kimberly K. Baker, uh, one of the defendants below. And Your Honor, uh, this case came to the court from a appeal of a final judgment of foreclosure entered on April 25, 2018, uh, granting in favor of the plaintiff and granting foreclosure of real property in Pinellas County. Uh, this case uh, commenced in February of 2010 by BAC Home Loan Servicing LP, uh, which filed to foreclose a promissory note and mortgage executed by George D. Baker. Mr. Baker died in August of 2009 before the case commenced and the appellant, my client, is the daughter of Mr. Baker and one of the heirs of the estate. In paragraph three of the complaint, BAC Home Loan Servicing alleged, and I quote, Federal National Mortgage Association is the owner of the note, plaintiff is the servicer of the loan and is the holder of the note, Federal National Mortgage Association has authorized plaintiff to bring this present action on the note. Attached to the complaint was an unrecorded assignment of mortgage from MERS to BAC Home Loan Service. Let me, let me stop you right there, Mr. Conklin. <clears throat> the, the interesting facts, I think, really begin a little bit before February of 2010, when in November of 2009, there was an assignment of mortgage. And according to the language in the assignment, it included the note and the rights under the note. So BAC was the holder of the note by assignment from Countrywide at the time the lawsuit was filed. That's correct. Okay, well. However, uh, keeping so in mind- So what's the standing problem? Well, there's a standing problem two ways. First of all, it's conceded by the, by the appellee in their reply brief and they even cite to the case of Kiefert. First, in order to uh, establish standing, you have to establish uh, standing both at the commencement of the case and at trial. And in this case, there were two different uh, plaintiffs. Uh, right. First, BAC Home Loan Servicing, LP, and then substituted almost four years later after the original note uh, and mortgage were filed with the court, uh, Green Tree Loan Servicing was substituted as the plaintiff, and they're the ones who went to trial. So, yeah, but before uh, that happened in May of May 13th of 2013, the note and mortgage were again assigned from BAC to Green Tree. Oh no, that wasn't true. The, uh, the assignment of mortgage is executed by Bank of America, which is a different company. But, yeah, but Kevorkian's testimony makes it clear that their unrefuted testimony is that Bank of America and BAC are essentially one and the same. I uh, no, he testifies that there was a merger uh, of the two companies, well, but there okay. was no testimony whatsoever and no documents put into evidence that this particular note and mortgage were a part of that merger. And, uh, you know, they, they put in a lot of evidence, Your Honor, as to uh, uh, the merger of Green Tree with DITEC and, and so forth. But then Green Tree doesn't put in a single document to sh show doc document evidence to show the merger between Bank of America and BAC Home Loan Servicing, which was the original plaintiff. And that is, is the- Is there anything in the record other than your argument to indicate that BAC and Bank of America aren't essentially one and the same for these purposes? And I'm quite confident that Mr. Kevorkian, who was the only trial witness, testified that they are. He did, but keep in mind, Mr. Kevorkian- So, so also, what, point me to the record that refutes that. Well, it doesn't, Your Honor. The point being, though, Mr. Kevorkian was never an employee of Bank of America. But he, that's his, he's a Ditech employee who's retracing the history of this note, right? Correct. And that, that's his unrebutted testimony. So I, I, don't, I don't think you get, that gets you anywhere to argue that BAC and Bank of America are separate. They're not. Not for, per, not for these purposes. Well, even if they are merged and we accept that, there was no evidence that this particular note of mortgage uh, were part of that merger. And that's a Siegel versus Wachovia Bank case uh, out of the fourth district, which is cited in my uh, reply brief. There is an assignment of note and mortgage from Bank of America to Green Tree, which is a company which accompanies the third amended complaint. In other words, we have an unbroken series of assignments here, it seems to me, from Countrywide to 
BAC and then from BAC to Green Tree and then Green Tree ultimately becomes DITEC. I, I, I fail to see a standing issue. Very well. Uh, as I say, I, I've cited to the court uh, the Siegel case, uh, and certainly the Siegel case talks about how complicated a merger is, and that they very easily could have put it in evidence that this particular note of mortgage were included in the merger, and they simply did not. But they have a, a, an assignment that's specific to this note and mortgage. That's correct. But as I say, it's from Bank of America. Uh, it is not from the original plaintiff, which you know commenced the case and also filed the original note of mortgage, and that's BAC Home Loan Servicing LP. So, you know, whether or not they merged and uh, there was, you know, unrefuted evidence as, as to that, nonetheless, there's no evidence whatsoever that this note of mortgage were included in that. The second though issue was whether BAC, uh, uh, BAC Home Loan Servicing LP had standing, and I cited in my brief to the case of Russell versus Aurora Loan Services out of this court. And if I may quote, in the mortgage foreclosure context, standing is broader than the actual ownership of the beneficial interest in the note, citing to Elston Leedsdale. Florida Rule of Civil Procedure 1.210A, the real party and in interest rule, permits an action to be prosecuted in the name of someone else other than but acting for the real party and in interest Thus, a servicer may be considered a party in interest to commence the legal action as long as the trustee joins and ratifies in the action in the original complaint and in the amended complaint filed by BAC. They both alleged that the owner of the property was Fannie Mae and that they were uh, acting uh, on behalf of Fannie Mae. So we go to trial. Green Tree. Uh, puts on evidence as to, well, their assignment of mortgage. They put on evidence as to the merger of uh, Green Tree with DITEC, but there wasn't a single document put into evidence showing that Fannie Mae had authorized BAC Home Loan Servicing to commence this case on its behalf. Uh, also, it's interesting at trial, Green Tree put in an, a limited power of attorney from Fannie Mae to Green Tree, authorizing it to act as the servicer and to bring and to finish the case, try the case on behalf of Fannie Mae, but there is no such evidence. Significantly, Your Honor, if you look at the uh, the answer brief, there is no mention whatsoever as to this issue. They don't even cite to the Russell case, nor do they cite to any case which would distinguish Russell's uh, this court's opinion in Russell. So the point being, without putting on any evidence whatsoever as to the authority of Fannie Mae uh, authorizing uh, BAC Home Loan Servicing to bring this suit, uh, the, the result which this court ruled in Russell was that there could be no other, uh, no other remedy other than, quote, dismissal based upon Nation Star's lack of standing. So, Your Honor, I submit that Although we disagree as to whether uh, Green Tree was able to establish standing at trial, nonetheless, there was no evidence of standing under Russell uh, of the original plaintiff BAC Home Loan Servicing. Uh, if I may reserve five minutes for any rebuttal. Yes, you've got plenty of time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. McNeil. Good morning, your honors. Our position is that there was overwhelming evidence presented at trial to establish that BAC Home Loan Servicing had standing at the inception of this um, action and that Ditech, formerly known as Green Tree, also had standing at the time final judgment was um, entered at this action. Looking at the standing of BAC Home Loan Servicing, um, and the court has already referenced it, one, we have a pre-complaint assignment of mortgage containing language assigning both the note and mortgage uh, to BAC Home Loan Servicing. BAC Home Loan Servicing then files the actual note uh, containing an endorsement in the court file during the pendency of this action. So one of the issues we raise is that we believe that um, the assignment of mortgage assigning both the note and mortgage coupled with filing the original note with the endorsement, those two actions together um, 
clearly established that BAC Home Loan Servicing has standing both as either the holder at the time or a non-holder in possession with rights of the holder. Looking then at DITEC standing, the assignment, DITEC can also rely as being the holder and or the non-holder in possession with rights of the holder because there is an assignment of mortgage assigning both the note and mortgage uh, to Green Tree, excuse me, DITEC formerly known as Green Tree. And then we also have BAC because they had standing as holder at the time that they did the transfer. DITEC now has um, standing as uh, the holder via constructive possession of the note or a non-holder with rights of the holder based on the assignment of mortgages. Uh, we believe that we can rely on both assignments of mortgage because of the evidence that was elicited at trial. In terms of uh, the issue that the assignment of mortgage references Bank of America NA versus BAC Home Loan Servicing, there, there was testimony at the trial that BAC Home Loan Servicing and Bank of America were essentially one of the same. I believe the witness testified that BAC Home Loan Servicing was the servicing arm of, arm of Bank of America and that Bank of America was the controlling interest in terms of BAC Home Loan Servicing. Also, I believe that before testimony began, um, looking at the transcript, there was also a discussion, although the court did not specifically say that they were taking judicial notice, I would argue that it appears that the court uh, did take judicial notice of the BAC Home Loan Servicing Bank of America um, relationship and merger. So just going step by step with, B, with uh, Bank of America, with BAC Home Loan Servicing standing at the inception of the case, we have this note, we have the assignment of mortgage, we have the note in the court file, as well as all the other exhibits introduced at trial that show that there was a transfer of the interest. We could also look at the fact that there was a demand letter from Bank of America introduced and accepted into evidence that there were payment histories from the uh, um, origination of this loan that showed that BAC Home Loan Servicing then Ditech accepted payments on this loan and then made payments in order to protect its interest in this, in this um, loan. And this also goes to the idea of proof of transfer, because as we know in the Progero case, the court stated that you can use that all the evidence introduced at trial, not just the note and mortgage, in and of itself is proof of the equitable transfer of the note and mortgage. Um, appellant, even though he hasn't necessarily raised it yet today in his oral argument, in his uh, brief, he does raise this uh, issue that somehow we cannot rely on the assignments of mortgage because assignments of mortgage cannot function to serve to transfer both the note and the mortgage. Um, we reject that stance because there's plenty of case law starting with the Taylor versus Deutsch case that an assignment of mortgage, as long as it contains language is um, transferring both the note and mortgage can be relied on. We have to remember that negotiation, that is the idea that the endorsement was actually placed on the note is but one way by which transfer can occur. And that's for the Taylor versus Deutsch case, as well as the Florida statutes, particularly uh, 673231, which states that transfer, whether or not it occurred by negotiation, does transfer the right from the transfer to the transferee to endorse the note. Now, in terms of the argument that has been raised in terms of Russell and the lack of any proof that uh, Bank of America, BAC, excuse me, had authorization from Fannie Mae to bring forth this action. Our position is that that does not need to be addressed because once you establish that you are either the holder or a non-holder of the note, the analysis ends there as to whether or not the party has standing to enforce the note and mortgage. We know this because one, the Florida statutes tell us so. If you look at Florida statute 673.3011, it lists the different categories that a party must be in order to enforce the note. They have to be either the holder, the non-holder in possession with rights of the holder, or if they're not in the possession of the note, they have to basically plead the lost note statute. That statute also says as its last line that a person may be entitled to enforce the note even if they're wrongfully in possession of the note, or even if they're not the holder, I mean, excuse me, not the owner of that note. 
So once we established that we were the holder and the non holder or the non holder in possession with the rights of the holder, no analysis needs to be done under Russell. Additionally, looking at the facts of this case compared to the facts in the Russell case, in the Russell case, you had a note and mortgage that was endorsed to a completely separate entity and the only assignment reference did not reference the, the entity which the note was specifically endorsed to. So I would uh, posit to this court that the analysis under Russell did not hinge on whether or not there was a power of attorney between the servicer and the owner. It hinged on the fact that there was no testimony or evidence whatsoever to establish that the party bringing the action uh, fit under one of the categories under 673.3011. Therefore, we don't even have to look at uh, the power of attorney issue. It is in essence a red herring. And again, DITEC uh, clearly established through the evidence, which I previously mentioned, that they also were either the holder or the non-holder in possessions with the rights of the holder. So they therefore had standing both through the inception of the action, through BAC, and then through um, their having an assignment of mortgage to their name before uh, final judgment was entered. So in sum summary, I would state that, again, the appellee has clearly established that they had standing in action. When you look at all 15 exhibits of evidence that were introduced into this case, there was no, um, there was no testimony or evidence entered by the defendant to knock any of that evidence out. So we have established, again, by virtue of the assignments of mortgage, which can be relied on per case law, that both BAC Home Loan Servicing and DITEC were assigned the rights as to the enforce this note and mortgage, and also by virtue of the fact of possession, whether it was actually physical or constructive possession, that they had the rights of the holder. Um, if there are any further questions from the court, I will uh, turn over to Mr. Conklin. Thank you, Ms. McNeil. Thank you. Okay. May your honor. Uh, it would have been nice if that argument had been made in the uh, answer brief. And it wasn't. They didn't address Russell. The point is that at trial, and it's significant to note that Green Tree supplied proof of its authority to act on behalf of Fannie Mae. That's plaintiff's exhibit 15 in evidence. That was a limited power of attorney from Fannie Mae to uh, Green Tree, uh, giving it the authority to. Uh, you know, prosecute this case on behalf of Fannie Mae, the owner. Unless this court's going to recede from Russell, Russell's still the law in this district, and that is a servicer may be considered a party in interest to commence the legal action as long as the trustee joins or ratifies in the action. And there was absolutely no proof whatsoever that Fannie Mae ever authorized uh, BAC Home Loan Servicing to bring this action on its behalf. As I said, the only result in uh, Russell was remand with instructions to dismiss. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you both. Our next case this morning is Department of Highway 